Hello, this is Dr. Eileen, and this is Medicine Walk. And for those of you who are listening in on Blog Talk Radio, this is Healing House Radio. So I hope everybody had a really good week. I hope that um, some of the information we talked about last week was valuable. And um, I will be in the chat room I'm for the premiere of the episode. I am in the chat room, and I will be there, you know, to answer questions if you would like to join in. Uh, For those of you who are listening in on Blog Talk Radio, please post any comments that you have in the comments section, and I will get to those. But otherwise, I invite you to watch any of the videos that are on YouTube, and consider subscribing. Uh, The link for the YouTube station the YouTube channel will be in the description as usual for Blog Talk Radio. So, uh, to continue our discussion of energetic defense, and to continue with, um, we went over some, you know, some of the practical ways that, you know, you can create that protection to create that clearing, and uh, some of the stuff, you know, information on clearing, you can go back into old videos and there will be episodes that are covering that. So you can go back and review. What we're going to be talking about today is the more emotional part of the defense piece. And while it can be one of the hardest things to do, today we're going to talk about not taking it personal. And that can be really hard. You know, the instinctive reaction when somebody, you know, comes at you is, you know, to meet force with force. So, you know, it's kind of that idea like the saying says, you know, sometimes when you fight fire with fire, all you end up with is a bigger fire. So what we're going to be talking about and exploring are ways to be able to stay in your centered and grounded place to have choice. And, And the key thing here is that idea of choice. It's that idea that you have the ability to be able to step out of the emotion of the experience and just go, okay, what is going to restore balance? What is going to allow me to go back to my balance place? And sometimes at first instinct, it's, you know, I'm going to mess with this person and I'm going to pay them back for trying to interfere with me and you know. so when you start getting into you know those really hard emotional places yeah you know, as we said when somebody is directing negative energy or negative intention at you that intention cannot attach to the light side aspect of you it has to attach to the shadow it will attach to your anger it will attach to your fear so responding in anger actually serves the purpose of the person who's directing energy at you. And like I said, I know this is hard. And, you know, in certain cases, you know, it it really is challenging. For me, it's not so much of energy directed at me because it's like, you know what? Hey, you know, come at me, bro, or sis. But for me, the biggest challenge is when it's directed at, like, you know, if if I feel energy is being directed at someone I care about. That's where my challenge is, is my protective nature over somebody else, especially someone who I love. So the idea of, you know, really training yourself to be able to go into that neutral place, uh, for those of you who are old enough to remember Star Trek, you know, to go into that Mr. Spock kind of zone. It's not that emotion, you know, is is a bad thing. And and we should always work to be authentic in what we're feeling. And when we're doing a work, especially a work where we're trying to separate from negative energy, we can't put negative energy into that. You need to ground. You need to breathe. You need to not take it personally. To detach and consider it, in your mind, a correction of energy as opposed to a retaliation. Now, when you are bouncing back energy towards someone, it's really important that, you know, when you go into your place, when you go into your meditation, when you, you know, bring up your shielding, 
that what you're going to do is it is just a straight bounce back. It is physics. The inertia of, you know, if, if the energy were a physical thing and it hit something and bounced back, its own inertia would create that. You know, the, the you know, law of motion that, or no, Newton's first law that uh, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So if it's bouncing back, you know, because when, you know, let's say, you know, I've got this hand here, this hand hits it, as soon as this hand hits it, this hand is exerting an equal and opposite force when they collide. So, I mean, that's just science. That's physics. Energy is very much the same way. If you create a, a reflection aspect to your defense where it's going to hit, the energy is going to hit, and it's going to go back to its source, you don't want to add extra into it. Yeah, well, I will correct that. You'll want to. A lot. And it's best that you not because that creates an energetic that can tamper with the purity of the action you know it's it's trying to add force and as soon as you create more force that energy is going to instinctively bounce back against it if it's just like a then that's one thing you know and you let it go you know you don't hold on to it and creating and, and having that negativity inside of you, when that bounce back happens, what can happen is, is that some of that negativity will start resonating with the negative energy coming in. And it's going to start getting sticky. It's not going to be a clean bounce back. And when you know, that starts getting involved when our emotions start getting involved, when our desire for revenge, our desire to, you know, eye for an eye, you know, it's eye for an eye just means that everybody goes blind. So consider very well and very carefully uh, what energy you're putting into that intention, that intention to protect because it is it's an intention to protect and correct it's an intention to restore balance into yourself and when you can do that from a clean place of intention that's when this you know the work is the most effective that's when you'll be able to deny that person who is trying to direct that energy at you they get nothing but their own yuck back. They get nothing back, but or they get nothing out of it, but what they're sending, which comes back to them. Now, you know, there's, there's, like I said, there's a lot of challenge to this, and so what I want to do is I want to share some tips to be able to detach emotionally. Now, the meditation, the breathing. You know, I cannot stress that breathing pattern. In for four, hold for four, exhale for eight. And you do that two or three times, and you allow yourself to just go into a place of calm, go into a place of stillness. Because it's from that place of stillness and calm that the best energetic work happens. Because there's no attachments. Even, you know, anger becomes an attachment. Fear becomes an attachment. Resentment becomes an attachment. So what you want to do is free yourselves of that attachment because you don't want any little bits of that stuff hanging on to you. And if it has a negative emotion that you're com having it within you that it can look into, it will. You know, depending on the level of proficiency of the person sending it. So more than likely it's probably not someone horribly proficient. And whether it is or not, this same process will work. So, you know, first, do your breathing. Ground. Realize that you are safe. Realize that this is something that you don't have to accept. That, you know, the intention behind it belongs to that person. 
you don't have to share their intention, the, the intention to disrupt. And coming from that place, and you know, and even coming from that place, you know, once you work on this, you even come from that place of this person really doesn't understand. This person is, you know, they're working against the universe. So the idea that, you know, it, it, and it's not even about feeling sorry for them because that's an attachment. Pity is an attachment. Enabling is an attachment. You know, and it, because it's the same. It's like, oh, well, this person and I'm going to, you know, I want to be gentle and loving to them. And, you know, and even love can have a shadow side. That's where codependence comes in. That's where that oh, well, I'm going to save them from themselves. That's not your job either. That becomes an attachment. This is just straight reflection. No investment. No, oh, well, you know, I, I you know, even it erring on the side of, well, I don't want them to be hurt. I don't want them this. You know what? Whatever they get back is what they sent. So it's their business as far as the impact that it has on them. Your job in this, your way of dealing with it, is center, ground, detach, and look at it as if it is, you know, go into the, you know, the left analytical brain. Because the left brain, that's where, you know, it's like, you know, it's zeros and ones. Either this helps or it hurts. What can we do to you know, correct this situation. So allow yourself to go a little bit into that logical mind. Don't worry about the emotion about it. Because in this moment, it's not about emotion. It's not about, um, well, what if they do it again? Or what if my defenses don't work? You don't worry about that. Have faith. Be confident. If you are in your centered space, it will work. And no matter how much that person wants you to think that it's working, you know, by pulling up, oh, well, you know, they didn't get a parking spot or they almost got cut off. You know, I have a lot of people who will come to me and say, it's like, oh, well, you know, somebody tried to do something and I was almost in an accident. And it's like, well, were you in an accident? Well, no, but I was almost in an accident. I said, so you weren't in an accident? Well, no. And you're fine. Yeah. I said, so can you embrace that even if somebody tried to do something, that the spirits and guardians that you have made sure it didn't happen? So therefore, you are not alone and you are protected. Their objective failed because nothing happened to you. So, you know, it is about looking at things in a more objective way. It's about separating from, you know, the story getting attached because it's very easy to attach a story. And then once we attach a story, we create emotion around it. So by just looking at it, that this is something that needs to be brought back into balance. Breathing, nice deep breaths. Remind yourself that you are not helpless. Remind yourself that you are not alone. You have guardians and guides and, you know, you have spirits that are looking out for you. You have, you know, there is that intervention. Because as soon as something happens that is working against harmony, immediately, you know, the universe decides to correct that energy. So you're going to have help. You just have to make sure that you let it go. And, you know, let's say you know flat out, it's like, okay, this person has been directing energy at me. And, you know, maybe somebody tells you that that person is directing energy at you, which, you know, there's an old saying, believe only half of what you see and none of what you hear. So if somebody says, oh, well, I know that this person is directing energy at you. Okay, that's information. And ultimately, is it true? It may be and it may not be. There's a lot of reasons why people say things. So don't get wrapped up 
in somebody else's story. You know, I have had situations where I've been told, oh, well, you know, this person is very powerful and, you know, and, and they're out to get you. And it's like, okay. <laughs> and, and they're very concerned that I am not more concerned. And the first thing I'm doing is using my energy and checking. It's like, okay, first off, does that ring true on a gut level for me? If it doesn't, then it's like, okay, well, this person is either being fed a line by somebody or they have interpreted their story in a different way. I have to check with what's reality for me. I check my perimeters. You know, I check and see. It's like, okay, is this just random, you know, stuff happens, or is it something with an intention behind it? I've learned how to be able to detect that, and you will too. It's just it takes practice. It takes being able to be still enough to notice any little ebbs and flows in the energy around you. And meditation with a stone, and you know, earlier in when we talked about meditation, uh, working with stones, stones are excellent for teaching stillness. You bring yourself into that place of the stone. And through that stillness, you can perceive any little, you know, it, it, it's almost like comparable to a spider in a spider web. You know, and, and for those of you who are creeped out by spiders, you know, just hang in with me on this. The idea that the spider sits very, very, very still. And it can notice any little vibration on the web, anywhere in the web. But in order to do that, it's got to be staying still. So consider your energy like a net that goes out from you, or, or webbing, or, or however, you know, it could just be a field. And picture yourself in the center of it, very still. And then you, you'll notice, you'll be able to learn to feel if someone else's energy is in your webbing, if it's in your net. And once you start being able to perceive that, then you'll be able to determine intention. You know, it, it could be anything. And it's important to remember that sometimes people are, they have their energy and they're projecting it and even they're not really aware of it. Someone may have been hurt by someone else. And you say one thing that sets them off and that other person isn't here and you are so you know that anger energy just kind of lashes out I mean that's a very loose intention that's more of an area of effect you've got somebody who is irritated who is whatever and and you just happen to you know be in the blast radius that is different than someone who goes out of their way specifically to affect you and you know it, it really is after a while once you learn that stillness you know go find yourself a stone especially a river stone river stones are excellent for this because they're all about things moving past things flowing past so by being able to do that first they teach about letting things go about not attaching and then you can find that still place and the more still you are the more you notice changes and fluctuations in the energy around you and by staying in that place of stillness you can tell if something is just like a, a bubble that enters the field kind of like a fog rolling in you know that's kind of how I visualize it is like a fog rolling in it's you know it, it kind of dispersed and there's no real you know focus to it it's just kind of you know like a fog bank and I can determine that and you will be able to to determine the difference between that and a focused thought a focused intention because what that does is that is actually got a very specific point to it it's got a very 
uh, focused aspect. And you'll be able to learn to, to discern that from the fog bank. It is practice, 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 like everything else. It's about disciplining yourself that when that type of energy comes into your field that you do not grab onto it from the emotional place and and this also has to do with the inner child because the inner child wants to be protected the inner child will also lash out you know when you know like you know kids on a playground one pushes and then the other one's going to push back the inner child is primal it is your sense of security it is any wounding that you had and for those you know who went through situations where either they were attacked or um, they as young children they had a, they were energetically attacked then it makes it very difficult to separate and not go into that primal child state you know in your spirit and stay in your place of choice you know, the primal part of us, you know, fight, flight, or freeze. Choice means I am going to look at what's happening. I am going to analyze this energy. I'm going to become very quiet and very still, and I'm going to look at this, see what I make of it, and then clear my field. So it's about being able to not focus on the fact that you're being you know, attacked and the intention and creating a story around it. But the idea is that something has created an imbalance in your field and you are simply restoring balance. And the other great part about it is that is that the person who is, you know, if it is somebody who's creating an intention, they are not getting the result they want. What they want to see in you is fear. What they want to see in you is reaction. What they want to see in you is something that surrenders your power to them. And when they don't get that, that starts making them nervous. That starts making them wonder, oh man, you know, it, it, maybe I've bitten off a little more than I can chew. You know, with the old saying, don't let your mouth write a check, your butt can't cash. And when you come from that place of balance, even if you, you know, even if it's not someone who, you know, you're looking at or whatever, when you bounce that energy back, they're going to feel it. They're going to know it. And they're going to know that maybe they want to redirect themselves and think twice about messing with you. You know, it, and it's not about, oh, you know, I'm big and I'm, you know, and I can be a bully. You know, this isn't about being a bully. This is about restoring balance. It's about finding that place of clarity within yourself. You don't feed it fear. You don't feed it anger. You don't attach to it. Remember, the only thing their negative energy can attach to is the shadow within you, not the light. That's when you bring your light up. That's when you bring your power up. That's when you bring your love up. Not, you know, for them or, or whatever, but just love. You fill yourself with it. You know, if you have a connection, a spiritual connection, you know, I, I have a connection with Creator. You know, that is how I term, you know, the being that I turn to, that cosmic consciousness of the universe. I turn to that. I go to my animal guides. I go to my spirit guides. I call their energy into me and be in that place of my power. And when you're in your place of your power, there's nothing anybody can do against you. Their energy will not work. So this week, make sure you practice. You know, find a stone, find that centering. Um, work on that place of detachment where it's just something to correct. It doesn't need extra energy because you don't want to put, you simply are there to correct. Whatever happens to them is their business. You know, that's that's their contract with the universe they're going to have to deal with. If you believe in karma, then that's their karma they're going to have to deal with. But for you, you stay clear, 
you stay direct, you stay focused, and you stay in choice. Because as long as you have choice, then you got it. They have no power over you, and you know it. So, thank you for joining me, and we will be back uh, next week with uh, the last part for, for this month. May has like five weeks, I, five Thursdays in it, I think. So, uh, if you have any questions, then please post them in the comments. If you find value in this, then share you can share the video and you can also subscribe which would be great because it's wonderful to see the community grow if you would like to support me in a bigger way in the description is the link to my patreon account and for as little as two dollars a month uh, you can help me move forward to you know get better equipment to uh, get better editing software and to really take things up to another level so, uh, if you are listening in on Blog Talk Radio, once again, please go to the description and you'll find the link for the YouTube channel, and please feel free to take a look at that. So, thank you for joining me. We'll see you next week. And as always, I wish you balance and I wish you blessings from my heart to yours. Love you and class dismissed.